Jai Gurudev, Jai Masters. Much, pretty much all of spiritual growth is completely misunderstood. The reason is that it doesn't start from the understanding that your natural state is the highest thing you've ever experienced. It, it's what you seek. It's everything you're looking for all the time is actually going on inside of you. Where normal personal growth, spiritual growth, all these different things start is how do I become okay? What do I need? What do I need to do? What do I need to get? What do I need to not do? What do I need to not get? In other words, it's all involved with we know you're not okay. What can you do or not do to make yourself be okay? There's nothing wrong with that except it's starting off with the wrong premise. It's starting off with the premise that you're not okay. But I know I'm not okay. I understand. You're not not okay because that's really the way you are. You're not okay because you are looking at the part of your being that's not okay. There is certainly a part of your being that's not okay. And if you stare at that part, that is what you're going to experience. There are parts of your being that are the most beautiful thing that you've ever experienced. If you stare at those, then that's what you'll experience. So it's not about staring at the part that's not okay and then figuring out what you need to do to be okay. I hope you understand that. I'm lonely. I'm not okay. I feel half. I need my whole. I need to find somebody. Wrong. Wrong. If you're not feeling whole, if your heart's not filled with love, if you're not feeling complete, it's because you're doing something inside that's not working. Because inside of you, there is all love is inside of you. That's what's so silly. When you feel love, where do you feel it? On your nose? On the little car over there? You feel it inside of yourself. That's because that's where it is. It's always there. It's never not there. Never. It is your fault that it requires a certain person saying a certain thing at just the right time in just the right way with candlelight (laughs) for you to feel love. You need a trigger in order for you to feel what's already inside of you. I don't understand why you're not insulted by that. That's just ridiculous. The question is not, what do I need to find? Who do I need to do? What do I need to happen? What do I need to prove? What do I need to achieve? How much money do I need to have? How do I need to dress? How do I need to talk? No. In order to do what? In order to somehow have a stimulus outside of me cause me to feel what's already inside of me. The answer is to say, if love is inside of me, and it is, anytime I ever felt it, it's inside of me, then why don't I feel it? That's the beginning of spirituality. Not what do I need to get? What do I need to lose? What do I need to renounce? What do I, oh my God, it's so confusing. It's ridiculous. It's very simple. If that is going on inside of me, why don't I feel it? Why don't I feel it? Believe it or not, there is an answer to that question. And if you find the answer to that question and you do something about that problem that you're creating inside yourself, that you don't feel it, you will feel it all the time. You will become a knower of truth you will realize, oh my God, there's this beautiful love and light and inspiration and passion inside of me every single millisecond, all the time, period. If I'm not feeling it, it's because I'm doing something inside of me that's causing me not to feel it. The sun is shining during the day. It's bright. It gives off light. It doesn't cost any money. If you close your blinds, your house is dark but you don't want to close the blinds. If you close the blinds and you don't like the dark and nobody likes the dark, but you leave the blinds closed, you've got to work hard to find lights and electricity and candles and all kinds of stuff to light the, the light because so you don't have darkness. But do you understand if you didn't close the blinds, you wouldn't have to do that? That is exactly what's going on. You have closed your heart. You have closed yourself just like the blinds, so that you can't feel the natural energies that are flowing inside of you. And then instead of learning to not close yourself, to not close the blinds, you're doing all this work to try to compensate for the fact that you close the blinds. So spirituality is never about that. It's never about getting. It was a Buddhist teacher, well-respected teacher back in the 80s, 70s, 80s. He said, spirituality is never about getting anything. It is always about losing things. It is about losing your ability to close the blinds. 
It is about losing the blinds. Don't even lose your ability to close them. Just throw the things away. If there are not blinds, you don't need to do what everybody else is doing. You don't need to run around and try to make it be light because it is light naturally. That's the foundation of what we're going to talk about tonight. What you are seeking outside of yourself is inside of you. All right. So how come sometimes when I meet somebody or I get a new car or I get a raise or somebody congratulates me, how come I feel good? Don't tell me I don't. I do. It's real. I agree 100%, a billion percent. That's absolutely right. If something happens outside of you that stops you from closing the blinds or lets them open, you will feel that light. And that's why you've been programmed that way throughout your life. That's why it seems to you that you need just the right job and just the right wife or husband and the kids behave just the right way and just the right you know, respect from other people, all that kind of stuff, because that turned you on before and you felt what you wanted to feel. It is because you closed yourself and set up conditions. I will only open if she treats me like this. I will only open if she's about my same height and I love hair that's down to blah, 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 blah. I will only like the job if I get the highest position. I have the corner office and I get to stay that and, and my boss doesn't change too often. Come on, set up conditions. You have them, don't you? What you have done when you did that is said, I have light inside of me, but it can only be experienced if these things happen. That's what you said. Now, that's not denying that if they do happen, you will feel it. I'm not taking that away from you. That's absolutely true. That's called conditional well-being. Is that what you want? So you got to work your butt off for day and night to try and feel good <laughs> inside yourself because you have to now work to make the conditions it's called indirection. You're doing it indirectly. Instead of directly feeling what's inside of you, you're trying to find something outside of you that will allow you to open yourself <laughs> so that you can feel the love that's already in you. Does that sound absurd? I hope it sounds absurd because that's what's happening. And now you have all these conditions. They're called your goals, your dreams, your this, your that. These are not spiritual things. I'm sorry to tell you. That's, that's the pseudo-spiritual that goes on. What are your dreams? I dream that someday the world will be the way I need it to be, so I'll stay open. I hope that someday what I need will happen. It's still conditional. It's good if you're depressed and you don't have hope or dreams. That's why they teach you that hopes and dreams are spiritual. It's because if you're depressed, I know it'll never happen. I'll never get what I want. There's no reason to even live. Well, that, that's not nice. Please have some hopes. You understand that? I want you doing that. <laughs> okay? So if my choice is that you go into depression and you think you'll never be happy because you can't get what you want, then at least hope that someday you will get what you want. But that's not deep enough for me. That's not where I want you living because that's completely conditional. It's ridiculous. Go on, meet somebody, get turned on, and then have them leave you. How you doing? Worse than before you met them. There is no win in this conditional game. It is something you have to struggle for all the time, try to make things be that way, I don't want to get into it. To me, it's just so obvious. It's like there are moments unfolding in front of you, right or wrong. Every moment, there's something unfolding in front of you. How in the world are you going to make every moment be the way you want? (laughs) They just keep coming and going. And so you're going to struggle. You might have something called, what's that? Oh, yeah, anxiety, tension. You might get a little uptight about the fact that the next moment might not, like, yes, she was nice when she was in front of me. Where'd she go now? Who's she talking to? Oh, yeah, it all comes out, doesn't it? That's where jealousy comes from, possessiveness, insecurity. All of it comes, all the mishagas of the only human stuff. You're not only human. You just fell there. (laughs) It's like ridiculous. So now because you have these conditions, I hope you understand, you can build the entire mess of the psychological mumbo-jumbo that people have inside of themselves because they set conditions to their happiness. I can only be happy if this happens. That's a heck of a statement. I can be only happy if this happens. That means out of the 800 billion things that could happen, there's only one that will make you happy. Those aren't very good odds, are they? Well, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Why'd you say there was only one person that I could love and only one thing that made me happy? And then you do that, and then if, God forbid, not really, it happens, and you feel exactly what you wanted to feel, I'm not denying that at all. If you get what you want, then you get out of the way and you open the blinds. <laughs> That's when you open the blinds. If anything goes wrong, you close them again. So now you got what you wanted. There it is. How do you feel? Great. Where is she now? Why is she talking to him? Why are they dancing so close? How can I trust her? 
Ooh, it, come on, admit it. It comes up, right? If there is something outside of you that matches the conditions you set, therefore you're feeling some beauty and some love and some inspiration, whatever it is, you have to keep it that way. You, you know it's not going to stay by itself. You've been around the block a few times. The moments keep changing. So the next thing you know, you're struggling to keep the job. You're struggling to keep the corner office. You're struggling to make sure nobody comes in. Oh, they're hiring somebody new. Well, what, what's his position? Where's he come from? Well, he was in your position at the other company. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's just always, you got all these problems. You just built a nest of problems. And you think there's solutions. Conditions are terrible things. They're terrible things. They ruin your life. But somehow you hold them up, and you're not alone. Everyone else does. You hold them up on a pedestal and say, these are the things that would make me happy. Why don't you just understand the rest won't? You named a handful of things. They're not going to happen. They'll happen once in a while. And then you'll freak out to try and keep them that way. And you do the same thing with things you don't want to happen. This is what would make me happy. If that happened, I would die. Don't ever say that. That's an affirmation. If that happened, I'll die. Oh, my God, don't affirm that. <laughs> and you're sitting there telling yourself, I have to have this to be okay, and I better not have that, or I'll be terrible. Now go out and have fun. You won't have fun. You'll be scared and desirous, and all kinds of mess comes up. Well, what is the alternative? That's why we come here. That's why we talk. The alternative is to say, if when I get what I want, I feel joy inside, and it's inside I feel the joy then that means there's joy inside. Who made it conditional? You've changed your mind plenty of times. Come on, let's be serious. You've changed your mind plenty of times about what will turn you on. Well, okay, here at five minutes to 10, you've decided this would make me happy. Then at five minutes after 10, you decide that wouldn't make me happy. This will make me happy. If the thing you decided at five after 10 would make you happy, happen at five to 10, it wouldn't have made you happy. In other words, there's something going on here, which is your mind with its decisions that it has made of what needs to happen for me to be okay and what better not happen for me not to be okay is destroying your life. And instead of saying to it, stop it, let me enjoy life, what's the alternative? Enjoy life. Enjoy life. There's a moment unfolding in front of you, dig it. I can't. Why? It's not what I want. Aha! If it was what you wanted, it would turn you on. So why not make it be what you wanted? And now you're going to say to me, I'll do it for you. I'll have the conversation for you. Right? But it's not what I want. I'd be lying to myself. But all you do is change your mind. It becomes what you want. It happens all the time. And so now you're at it. Now you understand why so much of spirituality is about how you work with your mind. It's, spirituality is not about mind, but you made it be about mind because you let your mind decide when you'll open and when you'll close. And therefore, your mind's a very important part of your spiritual growth. Very important. It has nothing to do with God. It's sort of like the anti-God. But as long as you're working with the anti-God, you can't feel God. Because the mind says, I won't be happy unless this happens. And I will never be happy if that happens. What if the mind didn't say that? What if the mind said something really stupid like, God, this is fun. What? Everything. What would that be like? What I trained my mind to say back in the 70s. That's a long time ago. I sat there and made it do it. And now it's just totally natural to me. I'm sitting on a planet spinning in the middle of nowhere. How about you? It's a tiny little dot in the middle of nowhere. There's 300 billion stars. I'm circling around one. There's two trillion galaxies, each of which has 300 billion stars. I'm sitting on a piece of dirt in the middle of nowhere, and it's fun. It's fun. This is what's happening on the piece of dirt. You guys showed up. <laughs> that's weird. It's like, it's just every moment you're experiencing a moment that's happening on a planet in the middle of nowhere. What do you care what's happening? It's exciting. It's interesting. Go to Mars. There's nothing happening. They've not found anything interesting on Mars. They may, I told you, it's truth. Because I watched it because I'm into that stuff. When they first sent those little rovers up to Mars, it was so boring that they started naming the rocks. Barnacle Bill and this and this. I was like, oh my God, you're kidding. When was the last time you named the rocks? You have much more interesting things to do here. You live on an amazing planet. There's flowers and trees and bugs and giraffes and wow. Okay? Why can't you train your mind to say that so that you enjoy every moment of your life? 
So you're turned on by everything. So you're excited by everything. Why can't it be that when a person walks, I hope this sounds crazy, because compared to what you call the normal mind, it's way out there. But you don't want a normal mind. That's why everybody's suffering. It's like, what if somebody walked up to you and instead of being so interested in whether they like you and don't like you and what they're saying, you were in awe that there's another biological robot sitting on a planet that talks to you and you understand what it's saying. You understand its language. Well, it's pretty far out. You know what it takes to do that? You know how complicated your ears have to be and your brain and all kinds of stuff? And you just start saying, wow. Well, what if it's yelling at you? Wow. Look, it's yelling at me. That's neat. Why do you have to make a drama out of everything? Why can't it just be fun? Because like I showed you, it is you who decides whether you're open or not. So why would you decide not to be open? If you like the feeling of joy, if you like the feeling of love, and in order to have that experience, you have to open your mind and open your heart, why would you close it and say, I'll only open if this, 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 and this, 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 this happen? <laughs> it's the stupidest thing in the world. Go on. Let's say you're starving to death. I'm hungry as could be. There's food right there, right there. There's good food. No, I can't have it. Why? Because Sally hasn't showed up yet, and she needs to give it to me, and then Paul has to offer it first from a spoon from her to there, and then they have to put it in my mouth. But first, it had... what did you do? Why did you set all those conditions? Just eating food. No, no. It has to be the way I said. Well, then you're going to starve. That's what you've done with your heart. That's what you've done with your mind. You said there had to be all these conditions to be met in order for me to feel what is my natural state, which is the beauty inside of me. Now, if you think I'm exaggerating, that's what witness consciousness is. Start watching your mind. You will freak out, realizing how picky the conditions are for you to be okay. You can't handle the weather. I can't be happy today. Why? It's going to rain. No, it's going to rain. I don't want it to rain. You're not wanting it to rain. It's not going to affect the rain. It's only going to affect how you're doing. That's exactly the same as saying, I can't eat the food. I'm starving. I can't eat it because so-and-so is not here and this isn't happening. And what are you doing? The weather is what it is. Why would you say that the weather determines whether I open my heart or not? It's a silly thing to do. You do it with the car driving in front of you, right? If it's driving too slow, it doesn't use its blinkers. It's blah, blah. Watch what you're doing inside. Or just watch. I dare you, all right? It's not okay. They don't drive the way I want. They need to drive faster and you start watching and you will see you are ruining your life. Life is not ruining your life. You are ruining your life because you have set up all these conditions and when they don't happen, you bother yourself about them, don't you? You bother yourself about the heat. You bother yourself about the cold. You bother yourself about the rain. You bother yourself about everything. If you sit there and I said, next week on Friday, the weather forecast said it might rain. You could get bothered. You could have something going on in your head. I don't want it to rain. Hello? It's just none of your business. The world is unfolding in front of you. You get to see a piece of it. Get with the program. So this becomes the essence of what happens when you realize, you come to realization, that there is beauty inside of me. You're going to understand there's a river of joy that flows inside. Find it, go there, get in, and drown. Just become ecstatic for no reason, just for the fun of it. Why not? You like being high, don't you? All right, Everything you're doing in your entire life is trying to be happy, trying to feel high, trying to feel love. It's there for you any time you want it. The only thing that's taking it away from you is you. Nothing can take away from you what is naturally inside of you, which is this beautiful flow of energy. So basically, this is the foundation of real spirituality, which is I got to change myself. I got to change the way I'm using my mind. My mind is not healthy what it's doing. It's making me a mess. And then I go to the same mind that decided I can't be happy until such as happens. And then I ask the mind, okay, how do I make it happen? And the next thing you know, you're a neurotic mess because your mind is bothering you all the time. So spirituality, real spirituality, deals with that. Well, how do you deal with that? First, you come to understand you're not going to be okay that way. It is not true that if you get what you want, you're going to be okay. You will not continue wanting it. Come on, you've been on the block. It will not be exactly the way you want it to be. You'll get used to it, and it won't turn you on anymore. Buy a new car. Get all excited. Go save up, work hard, buy a new car. For how long do you think that car will turn you on every time you get into it? It will become just like the car you got rid of 
within, well, it depends on who you are, it could be within weeks or certainly within months. The same thing with a house, same thing with everything. So you just realize it is not true that you will be okay by getting what you want. It is not true that you'll be okay by avoiding what you don't want. All right? If you avoid what you don't want, for a moment you feel you dodged a bullet, but you're still scared that it will happen. So instead, you sit there and say, my work is inside of me. I need to get my head together because it's causing me major problems. It's ruining my life. So how do you do that? I gave you one example. Start using what we call the analytical part of your mind. There's nothing wrong with your mind. What's wrong is what you're doing with your mind. Your mind is extremely intelligent. You have, I tell you all the time, people look at me weird. You have a human mind, don't you? Come on. <laughs> you have a human mind. The human mind split the atom. The human mind took minerals out of the earth and built them into a rocket ship and flew to the moon. <laughs> you got one of those. You have a brilliant mind. Brilliant. So the problem is not that your mind is a problem. It is what you are doing with it. What you did is say, oh mind, oh brilliant mind that can split the atom and fly to the moon and can create great mass supercomputers. Oh mind, figure out how everything needs to be for me to be okay. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. It's busy doing that, isn't it? Just go and think about every possibility that could happen. Which one do I think will make me happy? What do we, And figure out how everything better not be. And it builds this model. It's a computer model. It builds a model inside your head of this is the world the way I need it to be for me to open up, for me to feel comfortable, for me not to close. And we got one of those? It's just you built that over your life. You just built this whole model. And everybody's is different. Period. Everybody's model is different. I don't care if you're married to somebody for 60 years. Your models are completely different. Why? How are you going to build that model? How are you going to build the model of how it needs to be for you to be okay and how it better not be or you won't be? You're going to have your past experiences. You had experiences that turned you on a little bit. You want more of those. You had experiences that turned you off. You don't want those. So you have the data of your experiences becomes the foundation of the model. And since everybody had different experiences, everybody has different experiences all the time. Do you understand that? Nobody's got the same experience you have because you're looking from a different angle. And then the next thing happens. So your model becomes completely personalized. It's called the personal mind. So you collected this data. Then you use that to develop the model of how it needs to be for you to be okay. And the net result is you're running around saying, unless it's the way I want it to be, I'm not okay. And then you're using the purely analytical aspect of your mind now that you know what you want, to figure out how to get it. And that's what it does all the time. It just sits there and keeps thinking about, should I do this? Should I do that? I don't know. Should I ask her? I don't know. Was that good? I don't know. I I shouldn't have said that. I'm like, oh my God, what's it doing? It does that, doesn't it? I shouldn't have said that. God, I was doing well till I said that. What's wrong with me? God, I wish I hadn't said that. Should I call back? No, no, don't do that. Maybe she didn't hear it. What the heck is that? That's a neurotic mind. It's a broken mind that is saying, I have a way I need it to be and now I need to behave, and everybody needs to behave, and everything needs to be that way, or I'm not okay. Well, how often do you get it exactly the way you want? Almost never. And so you're never okay. You did this. You did this. And so a wise person wakes up and says, well, who am I that made up a way that things should be based on my past experiences, and then expects the moments unfolding in front of me to match? Do you see the non sequitur that the moments in front of you have nothing to do with what you made up? They have nothing to do with your past experiences. They're happening according to physics and chemistry and everything. There's unfolding. And you're now trying to superimpose this junk that you built inside your mind on top of the moments. And they're not that way. So you try to make them be that way. You use your will to manipulate and control and everything you wear and this and that and how you talk and how you walk and what car you drive. Every single thing and all your dreams of the future, everything are all about how do I get what I want and avoid what I don't want. And so life becomes a battle, doesn't it? It becomes a struggle. It is not supposed to be that way. So what's the alternative? The alternative is to stop it. We can talk about how, but the basic becomes, why are you doing that? Why did you make it so complicated? You drop down onto a planet. It's spinning around a star, of which there are 300 billion. <laughs> it's hilarious to talk about. And, and that's what you decided to do? Why? Why don't you just wake up in the morning and say, oh, wow, this is neat. I wonder what will happen today. It'll be fun. I'll just have fun with the day. It's going to unfold and I'll go to work. What's that? A place to go and play. Have a relationship. What's that? A place to go and play. I just, I'll drive a car. What's that? Weird, man. I'm driving a car on the planet. Get your head together here. It doesn't have to be a certain way for you to be okay. 
It's just that you said it did. You made it up. Well, maybe you need to stop doing that. And that is the essence of spirituality. When Christ said, don't worry about the splinter in somebody else's eye, worry about the log in yours. Physician, heal thyself. He's basically telling you, you got some work to do in there. And instead, you're trying to make everybody else (laughs) be a certain way. So how do you work with yourself? First, and that's why I emphasize it, you deeply understand what I'm talking about. I don't want you to do anything until you watch your mind enough to realize, ooh, it's worse than Mickey said. I hear right now it's worse than Mickey said. (laughs) It's worse than you can imagine that every moment of your life, your mind is bothering you. Your mind is saying something wrong. It's like, need something, want something, scared of something. It's like it's constantly not okay. And so you're not okay. And every once in a while, something looks hopeful and you feel better. Well, that doesn't last. It doesn't do anything. You're still struggling. So you look at it enough until you've had enough. I don't want to do that with my mind. I want to enjoy my life unconditionally. And then you start looking, how can I do that? What I teach, meditation techniques, all these things are very, very good. A lot of people teach them. You should do those. I'm not saying you shouldn't. But I teach something a little different. I want that if you want to free yourself of this, and I'm literally, I'm telling you, you should be ecstatic every moment of your life. How do you like that? All right? Literally, you should wake up in the morning like, wow, I'm back. I wonder what will happen today. And you get up and you just have fun, will you? Don't worry, you won't be here very long. But you might as well have a good time. I'm serious. You can do this. But you have to change the way you're dealing with your mind. It's not a matter of just changing what your mind likes or doesn't like. Everybody does that, right? I used to like her, now I like him. Right? Oh, come on, give me a break. That's not any different in any way, shape, or form. It has to be a complete paradigm shift. You have to say, I don't want to have a model. I want reality to be an enjoyable situation that I'm enjoying the fact that I'm on a planet that's been in the nowhere, that I have eyes and ears and nose and I can experience things and I can smell things and, and I have a heart that can feel things and a mind that can think things. Thank you. It's a constant state of gratitude. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. So what I teach in terms of techniques is something very interesting. It's something that is available to you no matter where you are, every single second at work, at home, driving your car, doesn't matter. Wherever you are, it is available to you to do this technique, which is first, do you see what's going on in your head? Check. <laughs> right? Watch. Pay attention. Do you see it? Because I'm telling you, it's not going to be good. <laughs> right? Just a guarantee. No matter where you are, you sit down, there can be something going on, cooking on inside your head that's either complaining or plotting or planning. Or the one I like the most is not even thinking about what's happening now. Think about what happened three years ago and bothering yourself about it. Yeah, you remember when I said that? God, that really hurt her. I feel so bad about that. It was 14 years ago. What are you doing? So wherever you are, first you check it out. And you're, I'm telling you, you're not going to like what you see, right? It's going to be because you have this habit of neurosis. You have a habit. I told you your habit. You got a bad habit. What? You built a model of how the world needs to be for you to be okay. That's your bad habit. And now you're in there bothering yourself about it. What you did right, you didn't do wrong. Blah, 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 blah. And good decisions. There are no decisions. There are no problems with decisions. The reason you have problems with decisions is because you have a model. And the model says things have to be a certain way for you to be okay. And things can't be a way or you won't be okay. And so now you have a decision to make. Do I go to New York and take the job? Or do I stay here in a job that really, you know, is kind of dead end type thing, but I really like it here and my girlfriend's here. Oh boy, you got a big decision, don't you? No, what you're trying to do is decide which will make me happy. You're trying to figure out, I have a way that it needs to be for me to be okay. Will New York give it to me? Or will staying here give it to me? That's tough, isn't it? Because now you're asking your mind to be psychic. Your mind should say to you, how do I know? I told my mind it gets to say that anytime it wants. Come on, man, how do I know? Why would I know whether going to New York can make me happier than staying here? I don't know. Wow, isn't that beautiful? He gets to not know because he doesn't know. If he knew, you wouldn't be worried about it. And you just look at it and you realize, I'm making myself sick again. I'm saying there's a certain way it needs to be for me to be okay, and I'm trying to figure out whether 10 years from now if I move to New York, it's going to be that way. That's why you have trouble making decisions, and you do, don't you? Because every single time you think it matters. You think it's the most important thing in the whole world whether you live in New York. You're on a planet, spinnable and nowhere. The only reason it makes a difference with you live is because you said it did. If you want to say it's neat living in Gainesville and who cares what the job is, then have fun with that. You want to say, oh, New York's exciting, then have fun with that. Right now you can't. 
because you're addicted to a mind that has a model that you've spent your whole life believing is real. So it sounds nice to hear this, but the moment you walk out, that would <laughs> come right back over your head and take you over. So if you understand that if you don't have that model and you just have this joy of living, it unfolds. At some point, life unfolds. That's what I found. It unfolds. You know, sitting there and you know, this is happening and all of a sudden the relationship ends by itself naturally. And then you get this invitation to go somewhere. So, well, why not? You don't have the relationship. And you just start noticing that there's this natural unfolding of things. It's not mystical. No, the whole universe built itself. Go study your cosmology. There was a Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. After that Big Bang, there was nothing but thick hydrogen clouds in the universe. Those clouds became this. Nothing was added. It's just the natural forces. And by the way, there's only four of them. There's only four natural forces, according to the standard model of physics, that created the whole universe. Gravity, electromagnetism, strong nuclear, and weak nuclear. I don't care if you understand what the measurements are or which is stronger or weaker. Come on, man. Four things. All there had to be a force of gravity, a force of electromagnetism, a strong nuclear force, and a weak nuclear force, and you leave those clouds alone for 13.8 billion years, and you guys show up. I'm serious. Is that neat? That's pretty far out, isn't it? So it seems to me there is a natural sequence of events. I would give it an A++++, making all this out of that. And now they're working with quantum physics to say, I don't even need the atoms that are making the hydrogen gas. That, that's too complicated already. I have you know, one electron, neutron, and proton. I can go down to the quantum level of the subatomic, and I can build the universe. They can build the universe. They can build every atom. They can build every single thing. They understand pretty much how all of it gets put together, and it did it by itself. Now, that doesn't say there's no G-O-D. To me, that's the same thing. It did it by itself. God did it. You didn't do it. That's all I care about. There's not a single human being that had anything to do with it. In fact, it made the human being. Therefore, there is a natural flow to things. Look at it. It made everything. It made the DNA molecule that can make human beings. And you just wake up and you realize it did a phenomenal job. It's still doing it. This is the same universe popping out of the same quantum field with the same natural forces. But you get to see it. You get to dance with it. Don't worry, it'll be fine. It's been pretty fine. Like I said, just will you look at what it built? And so instead of being neurotic and having this model that you made up, the personal model, that it has to be this way for me to be okay, as you work your way out of that, you understand, I'm going to be fine. Why? Because I'm fine. If you're filled with love and joy, what do you care what happens? The problem is you're not filled with love and joy because you set these conditions, and now you have to figure out what will make the conditions happen. And that's bare, isn't it? It's tough. Right? It's a lot of anxiety, a lot of tension. If you work from the root, that's what we're talking about, come back to the root of realizing you're a beautiful being who screwed yourself up. You don't need to find something to compensate for that. You need to stop saying only certain things will make me happy. The minute you say that, you limited your life. You can't do this. You have to say it's not about building a model of conditions and then trying to make the conditions happen. It's about being open, receptive, grateful, appreciative that you're alive, that you have eyes to see, that you can hear, that there are sounds, there are colors, you know, there are colors and shapes and sounds. Isn't that neat? It should blow you away. It's not so much what car do you have. You're actually sitting on a planet in a car going 60 miles an hour through the air. Wow. I hope you're having fun with everything. Everything. Period. It should be, wow, this is neat. I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to have fun with it. Let's say you go to work and that's your attitude. And right now you entry level at the company. You're doing mail room. You're doing sweeping the floor. But you just can't wait to get to work. You can't wait to sweep the floor again. You can't wait to see if you can do it better. You develop the best possible techniques that could possibly exist for sweeping the floor and doing the mail. You end up getting it done twice as fast as anybody else. And you're just having great fun. You don't think about a raise. You don't think about anything. Guess who's getting a raise? There's no way in the world they're leaving you in the mailroom if you're that good. It's about enjoying sweeping the floor. You're sitting on a planet. It's been in the middle of nowhere. There's no difference what you're doing. <laughs> it's like, and by the way, you're going to die soon. What in the world are you doing? Making a neurotic mess out of this stuff. Sweeping the floor, CEO, same thing, same thing. It's nothing. I saw somebody sent me a seven-minute clip 
Carl Sagan, just quoting Carl Sagan, that when the Voyager spacecraft, remember the Voyager, they launched it in the 70s, something like that, and it is the only spacecraft that has made it out of the solar system, out of the entire effect of the sun past all the planets, right? Just before it went out of the solar system, Carl Sagan asked that it would turn around, we still have control over it, turn around and take a picture of the planet Earth. You have any idea what that looked like? You can you t- take a star that you can hardly see. But what's beautiful is the entire way. They started with the Earth, and they came all the way back doing that kind of stuff. But Carl Sagan himself, I hope you know that name, was a very famous uh, astrophysicist who, who was down to Earth where he could talk to us. He sat there and narrated, and the narration was so unbelievable. He says every single dictator that thought they were something on this little piece of dirt, wake up. Nobody knows you. You don't even know you exist. You understand? There's this tiny little planet in the middle of nowhere. What do you think you got? What do you think you're doing? Wake up. If you can't have fun sitting on a little planet, literally in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? You did that. You made that mess. So you start to realize that if I want to be okay, I have to be okay. How do you like that? If I want to be okay, I have to be okay. With what? Reality. Because reality wins. If you're actually experiencing it, it means it actually happened. You better be okay with it. You can't make it not happen. You can't sit there and say, I'll wait until I can make something happen to be happy. Well, you won't be happy, period. But you can be happy. Now, how do you do this? You start what I call working with yourself. So you're driving your car, and the driver in front of you is driving 15 miles an hour above the speed limit, and you can't pass. You look to see, you can't pass. What are you going to do for the next five minutes or whatever it is until this driver turns off or until you turn off? You have a choice. You can sit there and drive yourself crazy, Talk to the driver inside your head, complain, do this, do that, in which case you've just ruined your life. Every moment of your life is precious. Don't waste five minutes. Don't waste one minute. It's a precious thing. It's going to be over very soon. And I want you to enjoy your life. Well, you just didn't enjoy your life. Why? Because a car was driving a certain speed on the planet? Why did you let yourself do that? So instead, I'm not saying you don't pass it. If you can pass it, pass it. Legally, you know, don't get an accident or something, right? But basically, you sit there and say, there's nothing wrong with the fact that I'm sitting on a planet spinning out of nowhere, and there's a person who prefers to drive 15 miles an hour with a speed limit. Work with yourself. Do not let your neurotic mind, with all of its needs and wants and fears and preferences, dictate the moment you're having. So you get to sit there and say, I like it. Look at that. That's great. The person's driving slow. I'll smell the roses. I'll do my mantra. This is great. This is, I have an excuse for being late. I was late anyways. Now I have an excuse. Like, oh, sorry, boss. It's like, learn to have fun. You are to enjoy every moment of your life. And if you don't know how to enjoy every moment of your life, learn. I gave you the clue. The reason you can't do it is you have developed the habit, the neural pathways, mental habits of putting a model together and saying, I'm only okay if that happens. And I'm not okay if that person is driving 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, period. And I'm not okay if I need to go out and deliver something and it starts raining. How about you? I'm not okay. Why did it have to rain? It's raining. Enjoy the rain. I told you, I train my mind all this stuff. I have an intelligent mind. I train it all the time. When if it's raining and he wants to complain about the raining, I sit there and say to him, you live on a planet in which water falls out of the sky. Go to Venus. What falls out of the sky in Venus? Hydrochloric acid. Where would you rather be? You can do this with your mind. You can change the way you think. Just little by little, work with yourself. If, if you're sitting there stopped at a light, right? Enjoy yourself. Make yourself enjoy yourself. All right, so that's how you create positive situations. Now, what do I do when there's difficulty? What do I do when my heart gets hurt? What do I do when I feel nervous or anxious? That's a serious question, isn't it? Learn to help yourself. Learn to help yourself. What I teach people is you got a little baby in there, very sensitive. If somebody looks at you the wrong way, it ruins your day. If somebody doesn't look at you, it ruins your day. Pretty sensitive stuff, isn't it? Okay? That's because you made a mess of yourself. Treat it like a child. Just talk to it. You can talk to it. Just sit there and say, it's okay. It's okay. You'll be okay. Be a therapist to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Raise yourself. Work with yourself. If your heart hurts, something happens that made your heart hurt, understand, hey, that's pretty neat. I have a heart, and it hurts. It can hurt. Nothing even touching it. It hurts a lot. <laughs> make fun. There's an expression. They give you lemons, make lemonade. Have fun. It's your job. Nobody can do it for you. You're the only one in there. Don't you dare thinking to meet somebody. All of a sudden, it's going to make it okay in there. 
For a moment it does. Why? Because it distracts you from yourself. The person's entertaining. It's distracting. And so the next thing you know, you're not thinking these kind of thoughts. Believe me, they'll come back. So it's kind of a fun work I'm giving you to do to sit there and directly say, I should be having fun. Period. I should be having fun. Well, well what, if, what if my boyfriend breaks up with me? Well, dig it. What do you mean dig it? My heart hurts. Dig it. Dig that my heart hurts? Sure. It's just something that happened on the planet Earth. Doesn't happen on Mars. <laughs> would, would you rather be on Mars? Would you rather be in the middle of nowhere? No. Learn to appreciate the experiences you're going through. Whatever they are, find a way to open yourself. Don't close. It's okay. I'm going through this experience. It's scary. It's this. It's that. Wow. 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 Okay. Just work. You'll be able to do it first, but you do it with the tiny things. You do it with the fact that you ordered a meal at a restaurant and it's not exactly what you wanted. <laughs> the temper's not exactly right or this isn't cooked exactly right or the people in the table next door are talking too loud. Hey, guys. Hello. You're about to ruin your lunch. They did. They ruined my lunch. No, they did not ruin your lunch. You ruined your lunch. You're perfectly willing to sit there and say, well, that's interesting. I didn't know my order would look like this. Well, that's a surprise. Have fun. What you have to do is catch it. The moment it starts to go negative, the moment, bring it up. Bring it up. Just be open. Make it fun. Make what fun? Everything. Make it fun. Every single thing that happens to you is an experience you had on the planet Earth. Well, kind of neat. Remember, tiny little planet, spin in the middle of nowhere. And these things are happening. It's fun. So you work with yourself. You raise yourself. You start with your mind. You raise your thoughts. You can use affirmation. You can have positive thinking. You can use mantra. Train your mind to say something over and over. This is a very powerful technique if you want to do this. Train your mind to say something over and over again. Just, you know, when you're taking 15 minutes in the morning, evening, just say it over and over again. Driving in the car by yourself, just start saying it. And train your mind to say this thing over and over again. When I used to do it, I just took the name of God. Which name? I didn't want to bother with names, so I just said God. So God, 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 God. Whatever you want. doesn't have to be God. It could be anything you want. It can be, I can handle this. I can handle this. I'm fine. It's not so terrible if your mind was constantly saying, I'm fine. Would it? Just get it going like a song that gets stuck in your mind. I want it going on in there. Now, what you're going to find out is something's going to happen, and your lower mind, the personal mind, the one I've been talking about, the model-oriented mind, is going to start to have a problem. I can't believe he said that. I, why do I say that? What did I do? What is that? In the meantime, you have a choice now. God, 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 or why did he say this? <laughs> They're layers of your mind. So you built a layer of your mind that's a lot nicer. Hang out with that, and pretty soon you'll start to. You'll start to realize it doesn't matter why he said it, and I'm just going to make up some stupid reason <laughs> to make myself feel better. I just as soon hang out with the mantra. That's the power of that. And pretty soon you're going to find out that if you do this and you hang out with a higher part of your mind, the lowest part of your mind or the one that causes the most trouble is this personal mind, the personal mind that has a model of how it needs to be for you to be okay. That's destructive. It destroys your life. Build a higher one. Just build a higher one and then learn to trust it. Trust what? I'm better off hanging out with that than I am with this neurotic mess that's ruining my life and everybody else around me. And pretty soon you're going to find out that if you don't hang out with the lower, it falls away. Why? Because you were the one who was making it figure out how everything needs to be for you to be okay. If instead now you're saying, hey, it's a lot more fun to hang out with the mantra, I'm telling you it falls away. If you don't put energy into it, it will fall off. And all of a sudden you start realizing, now I'm going to close up, is you're going to start to find out that all of a sudden you're happy. Why? No reason. You can't even figure it out. So I says, guys, you've got this light around you. You look like you're so, what, what happened? Did you meet somebody? No. What happened? I don't know. Nothing. You stopped making yourself miserable. That'll do a lot for making you happy. You stopped eating Twinkies and drinking 10 Cokes a day. You look healthier. What did you do? Nothing. I didn't do anything. I just stopped doing what I was doing. You stop hanging out with that part of your mind that's driving you crazy. Wait to see what happens. And you start to realize there's energy inside of you. And you don't have to do anything to get it. You just have to stop doing the stuff that screws it up. And so basically you'll start to feel what we call Shakti, spirit, chi, call it whatever you want. It starts going up. 
It starts coming up inside of you. It's a real thing. It's a real feeling. It's more real than somebody touching you. You just feel this energy flowing inside of you. And the more you don't hang out with your lower mind, the more it falls off. And you start to realize it's almost as though my lower mind was blocking the energy. It's almost as though my lower mind were the blinds. And that every time I complained about something, or wanted something, or needed something, it was blocking the energy. As I let that go, there are no blinds until eventually there are no blinds. There's just this constant upward flow of energy feeding you all the time. Your heart is uplifted. Your mind is uplifted. You feel all this juice coming up inside of you. I want you to get high. I want you to get high. And you get this energy. I told you the Bible, Christ taught this. He said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that leaveth the mouth of the Father. In other words, you don't just get high because what we talked about tonight, getting what you want, the conditions outside. That's bread. It's not just bread. It's the whole experience of life. Man does not live just by that, but by every word that leaves in the mouth of the Father. In other words, there's this inner flow of energy that flows up and it feeds you. That's what he's talking about. Well, what does it mean, every word that leaves in the mouth of the Father? At some point, that energy gets very strong. It's so strong you're intoxicated. You're high. Every experience you ever had that was beautiful, this is more beautiful because there's no conditions. And you start falling back into it. Just like when you really in intimate moments, you want to lose yourself, don't you? You don't want to stay there. You just want to feel yourself melt away into the arms of your beloved. You start melting into this. That's yoga. You start melting back in the energy flow. Every being of any tradition, there weren't a whole lot of them, that literally completely lost themselves in that energy and fell into it, came back and said the same thing. Oh, my God, I became the universe. I merged with God. My father and I are one. Buddha's nirvana. In other words, my individual consciousness fell into the ocean of consciousness. And Yogananda, his chapter, of Autobiography Yogi, the chapter was entitled, My Experience in Cosmic Consciousness. He said when that happened to him, he felt like every star and galaxy in the universe was his body. His whole being was expanding out of the speed of light and you just realize that's why I said every word that leaves the mouth of the Father you realize that energy flow that's feeding you has a source and that source is the source so you're down here being a beggar begging for her to like you and begging to get this job and begging to because you think you need these things to be okay when the whole universe is pouring inside of you you're just looking the wrong way there's something very beautiful in there it doesn't mean you don't have relationships of course you have relationships. People unfold. You feel all this love. They're welcome to share the love. But you're okay if they don't want them. Yes, there's beautiful love. You want to stand in it? You're welcome. I love it. It's welcome. Everything happens. It unfolds. You still have a career. You still have kids. You have everything. But you don't need anything. It just unfolds. And you participate in this. You dance with the universe. So that's what I want for you. What do I want? Not much. I just want you to be happy. Not happy. Ecstatic. Ecstatic. Every single moment of your life without having to do anything. It just be your completely natural state, and there's not a single thing you can do about it except bring yourself down, and why would you ever do that? All right, very good. Work on these things. Jai Griff.